Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. FAA restricts drones over Statue of Liberty, other landmarks. AUVSI's win appointed to FAA Management Advisory Council. And autonomous hover taxi makes first concept flight in Dubai. Hi, I'm Bree Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. At the request of U.S. national security and law enforcement agencies, the FAA is using its existing authority under 14 CFR Section 99.7 Special Security Instructions to address concerns about unauthorized drone operations over 10 Department of the Interior sites, including the Statue of Liberty and Mount Rushmore. This is the first time the agency has placed airspace restrictions for unmanned aircraft or drones over DOI landmarks. The FAA has placed similar airspace restrictions over military bases that currently remain in place. These restrictions will be effective October 5, 2017. There are only a few exceptions that permit drone flights within these restrictions, and they must be coordinated with the individual facility and or the FAA. The FAA and DOI have agreed to restrict drone flights up to 400 feet within the lateral boundaries of these sites. The Statue of Liberty National Monument in New York, New York, Boston National Historical Park, Boston, Massachusetts, Independence National Historical Park in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Folsom Dam in Folsom, California, Glen Canyon Dam, Lake Powell, Arizona, Grand Coulee Dam, Grand Coulee, Washington, Hoover Dam, Boulder City, Nevada, Jefferson National Expansion Memorial in St. Louis, Missouri, Mount Rushmore National Memorial, Keystone, South Dakota, and Shasta Dam, Shasta Lake, California. The FAA is considering additional requests from other federal agencies for restrictions using the FAA's Section 99.7 authority as they are received. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Drone manufacturer Dell Air has introduced its next generation professional unmanned aerial vehicle for survey grade photogrammetic mapping, the UX-11. This small fixed wing UAV combines a powerful integrated onboard system, industry grade sensors, limitless communication range, and PPK centimeter level positioning. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration used six Raytheon Company Coyote UAVs to track and model Hurricane Maria. Launched from a NOAA WP-3D Orion Hurricane Hunter aircraft, the Coyotes flew directly into the storm, giving researchers an unprecedented view of Maria from a safe distance. Developed for the military, Coyote is a small, expendable UAV that is air or ground launched into environments too dangerous for manned aircraft. A Chinese firm has unveiled the production version of an amphibious drone that could be used by both commercial interests and the Chinese military. The U-650 developed by Shanghai UVS Intelligence System is a fixed-wing aircraft with a wingspan of about 20 feet. The first deliverables could be coming off production lines by the end of the year. Trimble has introduced three new GNSS inertial systems for direct georeferencing on UAVs, the Trimble APX-15 EI UAV, Trimble APX-18 UAV, and Trimble APX-20 UAV. Direct geo-referencing with the systems allows the location of image elements collected by light detection and ranging and hyperspectral sensors to be accurately computed without extensive networks of ground control points, reducing costs while maintaining accuracy to produce maps. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chow has named Brian Wynn, President and CEO of AUVSI, to the FAA Management Advisory Council, Wynn, who will serve a three-year term on the MAC, will represent the unmanned aircraft systems community and provide counsel and advice to the FAA on policy and regulatory matters, as well as the agency's management and spending. Quote, collaboration between stakeholders increases accountability across the entire aviation community, and I am proud to be selected to help represent unmanned aircraft operators on the MAC, said Wynn. I look forward to working with the FAA, as well as other members of the MAC, to ensure that the skies remain safe for all users, 
both manned and unmanned. In addition to the MAC, Wynn was appointed to the FAA's Drone Advisory Committee in late 2016. AUVSI has served on numerous FAA aviation rulemaking committees, including those for remote identification standards for UAS and the UAS Integration Task Force. AUVSI also co-hosted the FAA's second annual UAS Symposium earlier this year, bringing together stakeholders from industry, government, and academia to discuss the integration of UAS into the airspace, when joins 12 other members of the MAC. This is what might happen when your drone grows up. Dubai is edging closer to its goal of launching a pioneering hover taxi service, with authorities announcing a successful concept flight made last week without passengers. The maiden concept flight of the autonomous air taxi involves a vehicle that will be used for the world's first self-flying taxi service said to be introduced by Dubai's Road and Transport Authority. The two-seater AAT, capable of transporting people without human intervention or a pilot, has been supplied by Volocopter, a Germany-based specialist manufacturer of autonomous air vehicles. Powered by electricity and featuring low noise levels, the AAT is an environmentally friendly vehicle. Its current prototype version has a maximum flight time of approximately 30 minutes at a cruise speed of 31 miles per hour and a maximum airspeed of just over 60 miles per hour. The AAT measures about 2 meters in height and the diameter of the rotor rim, including propellers, is just over 7 meters. Over the next five years, the RTA will collaborate with the UAE, General Civil Aviation Authority, and the Dubai Civil Aviation Authority to ensure that the operational requirements for implementing AAT services are put in place. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.